Welcome to the Trash Cats Trash Cast. I'm Richard. I'm Steven. And today we're talking about the royal family and our, our president's recent visit. Why? To Windsor Castle, where President Biden breached protocol. Is any of this true? Yes, it's very true. What did he do? He touched the king. Uh, and they take that as very disrespectful because they're dumb? Well, apparently, typically, it could be very offensive. Was um, it too but, sexual how he touched him? Um, yes. It was a, a soft caress across the back. Did you see the uh, Tucker Carlson, Andrew Tate interview? <laughs> They were both wearing elf <laughs> shoes, and they kept playing footsies the whole time. And they had to cut out all the parts where they were kissing each other. Well, I mean, that tracks. It, it was just like, wild. What, what else do you expect from a, from that interview? It looked like right before the interview, they they both Keebler elves and took their shoes. for the- I mean, that's... <laughs> That's on par behavior. I know it was coming wild. from coming from the right. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we really doing today? Well, I was going to tell you about how uh, um, our our eighty year old president is older than the seventy four year old king. Okay, I will try <laughs> to listen. <laughs> I'm just struggling with this. But go for it. King Charles and President Joe Biden met for the first time during the monarch's reign Monday, and all eyes were on them. The politician 80 encountered the 74-year-old sovereign at Windsor Castle, where many people believe that Biden <laughs> breached a protocol. Body language expert Judy James gave some insight into the pair's gathering on the sweltering July day. When Biden's car pulled up to the royal residence, Charles came out to welcome him with a handshake. When they both walked together up a few <laughs> steps, Biden gently placed his hand on Charles. That's a no-no. That's a big no-no. <laughs> Those body language experts are such hacks, too. Like, it's, there is interesting stuff you can learn or observe from people's body language, but no conclusions you come to are ever definitive. And yeah. any of those body language experts are like, the angle of his eyes based on the the movement of his arm to the, they like think they know some hard science. Yeah, you know, there's everything that I've seen that's Quackery. like- Quackery. I've been watching um, interrogation videos lately. And the the ones that I've been watching are like, a psychi- a couple like psychiatrists and like mm. like professionals like walk you th- uh, not psychiatrists uh, psychologists like walk you through like what's happening and like what what the police are trying to do like with their body language and like what they're looking for that is interesting but i the, if they're good and you like watching them i can already imagine they're giving a million prefaces or yeah yeah they're definitely they, every time they tr- start talking about body language they're like that you can't 100% guarantee based on body language. Like what a good interrogator would do is like not just look for one thing, but look for like multiple s- things that yeah. are like repetitive and like typically insinuate this Be- type of like behavior you know, patterns. Yeah, exactly. And it's like it's still not a guarantee, but it's no. a good clue if you're trying to like – figure out what's going on in their head the easiest example is like they'll be like oh they were folding their arms and that they were so nervous and that's why we know they were lying like that is yeah no yeah <laughs> that type of stuff is in police training all the time it's like the average person is going to show anxiety when being interviewed by a cop and then it's it, even more than that what if they have an anxiety disorder so exactly your entire yeah. analysis is trash after that yeah the uh, the body language expert did say that the handshake the two shared involved close torso proximity. Ooh. And, yeah. Uh, according to James, this was performed inside what is known as the intimate zone of friendship. <laughs> Don't touch me there. That's my private square. <laughs> <laughs> Too close to my my torso belly. <laughs> my, my torso zone. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just uh, I looked up some some good fun news for from today since I was working all day and uh, just wanted to share that with you. I enjoyed it. How's your week, man? Or how, well, fuck your week. I don't give a shit. Well, how are <laughs> <laughs> that, that? You know, that's fair. <laughs> what are you thinking about? What's been on your mind? Uh, well, currently, I, I do want to let you know right now there is some rain coming down on my roof, pretty heavy, and it's probably going to coming through on my. Uh, my uh, sound over here, so you might have That's nice. some some little bit of extra static there. It does sound very cool. Little ASMR. Yeah, we've been getting like on and off rain lately, and it's been 
Like, I miss a good thunderstorm. That was, like, the best part about Florida was, like, you get, like, a good daily thunderstorm. And, I like, enjoyed the rain. Yeah, like, like a real, like, heavy, like, even when it wasn't raining sometimes at night, you'd get, like, the static um, lightning mm-hmm. where it was just, like, fucking strobe light going off in the sky. It was so fucking cool. Yeah, definitely. But what have I been thinking about lately? Um, getting my fucking house together in the way that I want to. I've recently uh, went and invested in um, the paint for my countertops and a new sink and a faucet. DIY shit. That's that's where my head's at right now. It's chill. Yeah. Are, it's, are you satisfied with that? Are yes. You like in a good space with it? I'm a little terrified of doing the epoxy coat on my countertops. Because mm. I've never done that before. Uh, but here's hoping. Yeah. I have I have like the basic tips or knowledge but i don't know if like the countertop epoxy is the same as like uh, an art resin epoxy i have a feeling it's a much more it's a little different yeah Yeah, it's it's a little a little different is it the purple type shit no it's a clear it's almost like um but sometimes the the one of the the curing agent is like a purple um not from what i saw in the the stuff i got Got it doesn't look like it there is a um I mean, I've, I've watched a ton of videos and I feel my very mildly confident that I can do a decent job, but it's definitely also something that crossed my mind of like, what if I paint it and I just hire someone to come in and do the epoxy? So it's good. It's not a bad idea if you have somebody you can trust, but I have a feeling that's the thing is like, who more than you can trust (laughs) stranger. So, yeah. So, you know, we'll see. We'll we'll get there. I'm not going to start painting it anytime, like, in the next couple weeks or anything, but... That's cool. Yeah. Well, how you been? What's your, what's your week been like? Uh, man, you know how some people, you know, they, they go camping and they're really happy? Yep. Well, I'm not I definitely ha- know that. I'm not a happy camper. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm not feeling it, man. My, my mind's in a very minor tailspin. Like, I'm fine, but I'm... My brain is not enjoying existence right now at all. That's fair. That happens. Yeah, but I I, <laughs> I feel like I'm at a a crossroads. Like I, I'm trying to figure out what I, I like when I I'm depressed. I don't, I don't really like I've still been staying social and talking to like the couple people I talk to, mm-hmm. but it's been much harder and i'm not enjoying i'm not enjoying things nearly as much and i'm trying to figure out where like we talk privately i'm trying to figure out where to put my time because right now i'm not satisfied with the things i'm making and i put like all of um or like i I put a lot of my self-worth in that and i'm not happy with what i'm making so I'm very I'm very frustrated and trying to figure out like what the fuck I care about cuz I get off work and instantly go into my after work routine to like get as much shit made or done as I can but I'm not happy with things mm-hmm. right now so it's I don't know That's that's something I've recently realized I have to work on is putting or your evaluating my productivity with my self-worth like equivalating those two things is not it's something that i definitely did more in the past and i still do a little bit but i'm getting better at it i I smell a debate in the air okay here's 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 my question yeah (laughs) why shouldn't we equate ourselves with our productivity (sighs) I think there is a line where there's a healthy amount of that, but then there also has to be like, like when you are depressed, you set a, you should set a lower bar for yourself. If you know that you're not going to perform the same as you could, or you usually would. I don't disagree with that. Um, because if, when you set the bar 
you know, to a regular standard, then and you're not accomplishing that. You are beating yourself up for a problem that you can't fix and thus making it worse. I agree. But my dilemma, I, I guess, with becoming a, a working man mm-hmm. has been that my my overall life status is better than it's ever been. I have access to way more calories than I, I yeah. had for years. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, uh, I have more like physical things I care about. I might be able to get a house at some point. Mm-hmm. All my needs are met and I'm not relying on other people. I'm like kind of healthier than I used to be, but I don't really care about any of that. So it feels like I'm wasting so much time. And it's, I I feel like time just speeds up with age or our perception of it. And I feel like I'm wasting very valuable time to get things I don't care about. And I'm, I'm, I'm increasingly frustrated with that. And if I think about like why uh, a school bus full of kids explodes in Turkey, like I don't give a shit. It's not. Like, I don't want that to happen, but that's th- the world. Yeah. Why should I give a fuck about myself if I'm not doing something I see as valuable? And it, that question sounds like, uh, oh, it's it, it, there's something obviously wrong with you if you don't think you're the most important person in the world and you should mm. self-fucking-love yourself so much, but... I, I really don't see what's the point of valuing yourself or anyone unless you're doing something you feel is important. I feel like there's an element of what you're saying that, that, that I fully agree with that. I understand that like, if you're not doing shit that it's worthwhile, why, like, why do you care about anything that you're doing? If it's not, giving you that sense of satisfaction that you did something like do you i'm assuming you don't get that satisfaction of production do you get that from your work no yeah so that definitely makes it harder that's number one i definitely don't have an answer for you on that but I feel like I think your your self worth has more to do with what you have to offer to the people around you rather than in general. Uh, I'm trying to think of the better way to phrase this, dude. My instant reaction is so negative to that. <laughs> it's so terrible. Uh, I don't even like. You see, I think evaluating your self worth sh- isn't. It shouldn't just be through your lens. And I think we've talked about this a little bit before, where like your worth is compounded of how you value yourself in your time, and also with how. Other people value you and your time. Um, for and me or for everyone? For everyone. Okay. So while, you know, obviously people that don't know you or anything like, you know, you're not of value. Right. But like for the people that are around you or in, in anywhere kind of close to your, your life, those people hold you in a different value than you might hold yourself. And I feel like that should be included if you're arguing, if you're, if you're considering the value of yourself and your time. Because if you could be giving your time to someone or something else that values you more than, you know, 
work or something else, then, you know, obviously fuck that job. But I'm also like, again, I, I forget a lot of the time that I'm speaking from a place where I, it's hard for me to speak on that because I, I have a, my, my job situation is yeah different. I'm telling you, man, just move up here and start selling smoothies with your boy. I would enjoy working with you, but I, I don't think I would be okay with it either. Like long term. I definitely yeah, would no, have yeah, way I, more fun in the short term. Yeah, I don't think you would get the satisfaction out of it that I do. But it is fun. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely there's it's work, but I don't know. At the end of the day we're selling smoothies. It's it's I, pretty chill. I've I've kind of noticed this thing. Like I, I was, I've listened to our last episode like three times because I've been tr- going back and m- forth in my head on I- if the Earth is sacred, right? Like mm. I- if anything can be, it probably should be the place we live, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think. I think a long time ago I did think that and i i think when i'm being at my most honest i don't believe that anymore but what i'm struggling to figure out with that is that has a lot of implications because if i don't if i don't think our world is sacred then why should i give a fuck about animals why should i give a fuck about other people why should you fucking care about anything at all which is like been the the fundamental like question of my life really but yeah i i think i think the more i'm thinking about these things the less answers i have where i'm uh i'm increasingly more gray and flexible but with much less confidence than I used to have Mm -hmm. where I, uh, you know, you say all the time, I'm very black and white, but I think with things that matter or like the really big question stuff, I'm, I'm increasingly less confident and skeptical of other people's confidence that they have, the validation or justification to value anything they're valuing where I'm a, uh, there's gotta be a good name for it. Like, uh, the, the philosophers, uh, like uh spiral or something where like the, the more, the more you're questioning why of thing like, Oh yeah. If yeah, you man, play out it, the Socratic method to like too far, like where the fuck do you go type of thing? Yeah. Um, they're, I mean, I don't know that there's a specific word, but I that is a it's thing, right? There's, yeah. It's got to be, yeah. Because that's too common of like a trope in general of like when you ask, you know, the, I like the thing. It's like, why is the sky blue? You know, why is the sky? And then like, why? <laughs> why is? And then why? It's like, it just, you barrel back and it's like, what's the real question that means anything and like how deep do you want to fucking go down the rabbit hole? But like there, there are certain things that I mean, which I I think is somewhat contradictory of me to, you know, be the, you know, the person who's always talking about the dirt ball theory, but it's also like we are like when you start going like too deep into meta brain, when you start like looking at everything from the scope of the universe, it's like, you're going to drive yourself fucking mad. Like, these are fun things to talk about and think about sometimes, but, like, you have to have the grounding on that. And that grounding is just, it it doesn't have to be just here on Earth. It can just be, like, in your fucking house, like, whatever. Like, your, you know, social, you know, neighborhood, the people that you talk to, whatever. I think that finding that when you start getting too outward, you're, you're, you are going to spiral and that's, you know, 
can lead to some interesting revelations, but it's not. But it, yeah, but it, it's, it's not grounded. Yeah, but I feel like that's the whole point. Where <sighs> the point of what living? Like if if you stay so grounded, you're not figuring out anything. Mm. Or I don't know. But then it's I like, mean, what was the point? <laughs> like I, I'm, I really I want you it, to read. Thus spoke Zarathustra at some point because I I feel like I'm uh, at the top of the mountain and I'm deciding if I go back down and start over. Like the the prophet goes to this series of loops up and down the mountain, and it's like trying to figure out where where you want to go next because I'm. I don't know. There's, I'm trying to articulate more clearly, but I mean, even based on what you're kind of describing, I f- I feel like when you spend too much time thinking macro level, you're that's you know what in, and I guess in business it's like the the blue skies phase, right? Where like anything's possible. Like let's think outside the box. Let's go above and beyond. Like Let's look at everything from, you know, um, you know, from nothing and like figure out how to look at this a different way. But when you actually need to do something actionable, that's when you rein it back in. So if you're looking to make progress or change, it's, it's always good to like look outside the box and like feel around out there, step outside, kind of feel a new, try to find a new way of thinking even but but then when it comes to do something like doing something about it you can't do something out there you have to do something here so it's it's pulling in that thinking and like how can you apply what you're thinking there here and it doesn't always work like that i i don't think you're wrong at all i mean i'm really just talking um about like how I'm feeling and a different approach definitely may be beneficial or, or better. But I, I seem, I always seem to run into the problem where like the only things uh, like we've talked about, like dissociative disorder type stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't feel present at -hmm. all. Like almost ever. The only, the only things that give me that are, like harmful to me where like functioning in my daily life i don't it, it's it's almost like a ghost mode it, i can like do the physical things and exist physically but none none of it's like of substance or uh I'm not feeling much, mm-hmm. so it makes it hard to 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 care about those things. Like when you said earlier, which is like it sounds so terrible, and I would like to think that the people I love probably understand. But the when you said like part of your value is you know how other people value you too, or mm-hmm. like what you can offer them. And my first thought is, I don't give a fuck about, uh, like, what I can offer them or what I mean to them. Mm-hmm. And I, I can know that's, I can know I don't feel that way all the time, or I know that's, like, not good and, like, I'm, like, analyzing things right now. It's not always that way, but there, there's a big streak of me where that that's v- way more true than I think the people I care about would like or be able to understand mm-hmm. because I, I don't nece- I don't necessarily want it to be that way but I don't I don't really it, it just doesn't seem to matter I I mean I feel like that's and correct me if I'm wrong I feel like that's kind of a trait of someone who is as who tries to be as self, you know, motivated, self, 
like governing as you are. It, do you think it stems from some of that where it's like, I feel like you definitely have, uh, you definitely value your, like, if nothing, if everything else falls, I have me. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't used to, I used to like kind of, I think, fake that. And then I think like self fulfilling prophecy, it became like super true. You faked it till you made it, man. Yeah. I, th- I, more and more feel like so much is like, God, I gotta stop saying like it's such a bad fuck. Sorry, habit. yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm, working I'm on not. It. God, I'm not man. at all good at pointing it out when you do it because I'm not <laughs> catching it at all. I think it is similar to <laughs> a like goddamn trauma response thing because I used to care so much and I just got to the point where I I can't afford to do that. It's mm-hmm. too too harmful. Where this year I've had uh, a handful of my older cousins where they're they're all like five, ten years older, uh, die from substance shit. And so I really wasn't that close to most of them, but it is kind of like the lineage on half of my my family and I, mm-hmm. I'm not super upset about them being gone. I wasn't particularly close, but there there's an element of if I let all those shitty things over the years always be hurtful, there's, there's no way I would be able to just choose to rely on myself where I can't invest that much in how I value other people or or what they think of me because people tend to fuck you over, let you down. And that's going to be more pain than I'm able or want to experience. And in the Mm -hmm. past, I think I tried to make that way and it wasn't true. And now it's just super true. And it's, it's harder to, to care about those things or people now. I mean, I, I definitely resonate with the idea of like, I have, I, I'm really bad about reaching out to people and you suck at it. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I really do. And I, I come by it honestly in the way yeah. that like both my dad and his dad have really are just bad at like reaching out to people. And like, I, it may be just a pattern of, I don't know, but it's, it's something that of course I'm happy to talk to someone and like, I'd like to reach out more, but then there's also the thing of like, Oh, it's been too long now. It's weird now or something like that. Like that's like thought that crossed with my mind anyways. But my point, my point being, it's like, I definitely have the core group of people that are closest to me in my life. And those people those people's opinions way more because they're closer to me. I have tons of cousins that I'm not close to. And it's like, you can't, of course I don't want something to happen to them, but if something did, it's like, I don't, I don't know you, you know, like I don't, we're not like we, I, we hung out when we were really tiny kids. And like, now I feel like we're fucking strangers and like, yeah, like nothing, it wouldn't affect me. If something were to happen to them, I think that the difference in how you like pull from that or what you pull from that is, I think it's just more an experience where, and correct me if I'm wrong, in, you know, your 20s, you had a lot more time that you spent you know, on your own or with a lot more unreliable people that, I mean, like that's, that's just what you, you had based on what you were like, what your lifestyle was. Yeah. I think sometimes I don't either give myself credit or cut myself slack for like how, how many 
awful situations I've been in. And I, I, don't know, I think it makes a lot of sense why, why I am the way I am. But even like thinking of like how, how you just said those cousins that, you know, we, when we were kids, we felt super close to, and now they're like strangers. I feel like that should be a very sad thing. Like that should be really upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's not because we grow the fuck up and yeah, are used to that. That's fucking life in the big city, man. Yeah. I just, I, I agree. Like it, it would, it, it seems like it would, should be a very sad thing, but it's, it's just not, it's just, I don't know. It's just normal. And it's like, they got their shit going on and I'm sure if anything were to happen, I did have, I mean, the, the closest interaction I have with the, the distant cousin was one of my cousins reached out, uh, cousin Ricky <laughs> reached out not too long ago and was like, Hey, um, I noticed another page on Facebook that had like your picture and was like reaching out to people when I reported it. <laughs> I was like, good looking out, man. Thank you. This is the only one I got. And, and like, that was it. And I, and even after that, like I was working at the time. So I just had to qu- send a quick thing. And, and then I thought I should reach back out to him, just see how he's doing. And then, and then I didn't, <laughs> you know, and it's not, it's like, it's That's not that I, dude. it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those like I thought about while I was driving and then like by the time I got home it was like but then I got to feed the cats and then this happened and that happened and then I'm sitting at home and like I just it, it wasn't a thing on my mind it just wasn't there and that that I do I do feel bad about that like you should I know. <laughs> that is a dick move that's hilarious dude but like, like thanks like, Facebook spam patrol <laughs> But to be fair, it's a two-way street. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, and like, it's funny. he didn't reach back out to me like, hey, you know, by the way, how are you doing? It's like none of that, you know? So it's like, it's not, it shouldn't all be on me no. to, to do that. But also like, good looking out, Ricky. <laughs> that was my, he was, he was um, the first person I knew that was into, um. ICP. Hey, that's a big influence. I'll I'll juggalo cousin Ricky. Well, I didn't even know it until I guess he wasn't the first person I knew that was into it. Like I met someone into it and I brought home a a burned ass bootleg CD (laughs) and my dad was like, Oh, you know who likes ICP? It's your boy Ricky. (laughs) I think I, I kind of don't think break in my computer i kind of don't think you're similar to me in this same way but i i think at least my i my initial state of being is extremely sensitive and emotional Mm -hmm. and i i've shed that and like as cheesy it is as it is the one of my favorite quotes is the he who makes a beast of himself gets rid of the pain of being a man and i i think i've just always not liked how emotional or sensitive i am so i've found really effective ways of like deleting that and then when i i don't know when i start feeling shit too much it becomes upsetting and i have to like figure out how to course correct i, I think i'm when, just when you when you start feeling feelings again yeah I, i'm just i just feel i'm at the bottom of the mountain i gotta figure out what the next what the next phase is what the next whether it's a, the next week or year like w- where i want to pivot and readjust because I, I'm not in the same turbulent times where I need the same armor. Cause it's like, you know, armor is a weight, you know, mm-hmm. You're carrying around extra shit you don't need. And if I, I don't need the same things there, there might be better, better paths forward or, or um, at least a more 
either comfortable or productive. I would prefer productive for out forward, but mm-hmm. okay, I'm sorry, multi-class a man, pick up a little bit of that level level one monk, you get that unarmored unarmored ability. <laughs> I, I can't lie. D and D classes are the most cringe thing. <laughs> the whole systems are so. Uh, I think bonkers. it's fun. I think it's fun because it's organized and like the idea of it's like supposed to be checks and balances to keep Ugh. someone from being too. I have know. no idea how much any of my attacks do or any of my abilities. <laughs> I'm figuring it out on the fly. <laughs> By going, hey Ricky, what, yeah, what it's like if, all my shit if it do? wasn't it wasn't for me <laughs> helping make a character sheet for you, <laughs> I just enjoy the the story storytelling, and I, I I think that's what I'm trying to figure out is like what what do I want the next part of the story to be? But I yeah. I'm not I'm not inspired. I don't I don't know. Yeah, I feel like that gets it's at least for me it's gotten a lot harder as I've gotten older. I usually I, I've Way been able to harder. like look into a you know one year plan, five year plan, ten year plan kind of thing, and like have at least a vision of like I could see it going this way, or have a couple different ideas like maybe it's going to go this way, like maybe I should focus more on this. Yeah, let me try this out kind of thing. And now, I mean, and part harder. of that also, I feel like you've gained experience. That you can figure out like, okay, I know I don't want to do this now, or I know this isn't something I should invest my time in. Like it's, it's kind of, it's a dead end. So, you know, I I think, I think some of that, you know, narrowing down ideas from that blue sky phase, you know, when, when the, the world is your oyster, when you're, you know, 17 years old and you have nothing but, you know fucking naive na- naivete mm-hmm. in in your eyes and uh i feel like th- then your your options are they feel endless but once you start down a path and you're like okay well this is this is something that i can sink my teeth into i mean people change their careers you know in their in their adulthood all the time so yeah part of me feels like i might be one of those people because I've gone through like two really big, two or three really big switches already. And I feel like I might do this for another two years and then try to pull another switcheroo. I like the idea of trying to master a bunch of different things. But like you said, the, the more things you rule out, like I, I want to feel, I, I, I figured out better options each time, but I want to, f- figure out what the option is that I actually am excited about. Cause I just don't get excited about shit much, you know, mm-hmm. I want to figure out a new direction that I'm oh, fuck eager to go in. Yeah. Here's a direction I would be eager to go in. You want to become a zookeeper? Um, I actually just went to the zoo this weekend. I was finally, social um it was really fun it was with sam and megan um get a fucking uh get a bachelor's degree in zoology or some shit see i i don't need that degree i would be a better zookeeper than i'll say a good 60 percent of zookeepers on my first day (laughs) (laughs) bro i know animals man i could just i mean Put so, my hand on their head and we would vibe and then they'd listen to me forever. That's what I tried to tell the lady who's the tiger keeper at the zoo. I'm not and, doing it with tigers. I'm not an idiot. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you get like some swans or something. Bro, these swans listen to me. We're it's telepathic, like, bro. These swans <laughs> love me, man. I'm not like, it's not any of the animals in the cage. It's like the pigeons that fly in. <laughs> Dude, that was the coolest part of the zoo <laughs> on Sunday. People were feeding the, the elephant um, peanuts. Mm-hmm. And instead, some kid threw a peanut into the bushes and a squirrel picked it up and it ate that peanut like corn on the cob for 15 minutes. Nice. And everybody's <laughs> yeah. watching this dumbass elephant from 100 yards away. And I got the front row seat to a squirrel eating a peanut. It was Hell yeah. awesome. 
Dude, one of my favorite things about working at the zoo now, um, within the first couple of weeks, the of course, the peacocks like roam free. And one time, like there's a fucking peacock in the food court, like right where we are. There's like a big patio kind of area with a bunch of tables and shit. And when like school groups come, that's where they eat lunch at. Mm-hmm. And there are a bunch of kids eating. And then, you know, like they eventually they all got up and left and there's like fucking trash all over the place there's food on the ground and shit and we saw the peacock start walking up and we're like oh man what can we can we what should we like offer this peacock to like make him like come by and like what can we feed him attack these children like some (laughs) some peacock pheromones we can spray on the children's backpacks It, the, you know, we were like, oh, man, like, we don't want to give him anything, like, that's going to upset his diet or something. And we look over and he's eating fucking Flamin' Hots off the ground. Oh, my God, like, <laughs> dude. That's hilarious. Don't he's, like anything. He's say. fucking eating trash. <laughs> that's hilarious, dude. My boy's eating chips, fucking flavor blasted Cheetos. <laughs> dude, the next thing you should do is build a fake peacock, like, Muppet. Like a <laughs> like a hyper realistic fake peacock, and then when the kids litter all their their shit food all over the ground, you you plant the fake peacock and make it look dead, and then you run up to the kids as they're leaving and, and like scream at them like look what your littering did, and then like <laughs> kick the dead peacock it's dead and it's your fault you then, killed it. <laughs> And then, like, <laughs> scoop up the peacock and, like, go bury it in a grave and just, just know you permanently. I have a grave affected. already dug and then I just. <laughs> <laughs> just kick it into, into the grave like, like a soccer ball and just start shoveling it close. This is on you. <laughs> go back to work and know you, like, fucked just these kids' minds. Destroyed these kids. <laughs> permanent trauma <laughs> oh man dude you make me want to work at the zoo just to prank children all day <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's the best place to do it <laughs> there's a fucking lot of them i will say <laughs> i think my my edgy statement is true <laughs> i think parents do love <laughs> i do th- <laughs> I can't even say it. <laughs> Loki parents love when their kids are molested. It is <laughs> because these parents at the zoo are reckless. They're like, hey, kid, how about you run into this dark, empty cat house building by yourself? Hope you don't get lost and abducted. It is absurd what these parents do. Dude, I did. I, I did watch a kid that we thought like went went missing. The parent, <laughs> <laughs> a parent, uh, like a family came up and they're like. They're everyone's looking at the menu. Meanwhile, I guess one of their kids wanders off and they like ordered a couple things. And then before like they go to pay, they look around, they realize, you know, whatever, Brandon's not here. And they're like, Where is he? I just saw he was right there. And then like everyone's like spreading out looking for Brandon. And or looking like there's the carousel there. Maybe he went over there. I'm looking like behind the side of the building just to see like, is there a fucking kid over here? Um, and I, we, I came around the front and the the mom's like walking over towards like some of the other tables and stuff. Kid had just went over and like sat at the table. He's sitting there kicking his fucking legs back and <laughs> forth, like waiting for them to come join him. <laughs> He's like, what are these idiots looking for? <laughs> Chilling, bro. They're like yelling his name and he's not <laughs> responding. <laughs> uh, like what? <laughs> Man, I just ate a quarter bottle of uh, hot sauce with my dinner from uh, Puerto Rico. It is so good. And I'm just, this, this whole podcast, I'm just looking at... Like, I'm pre- pretending to have feelings while I look at a hot sauce bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, all I'm actually thinking about is contemplating how much hot sauce I want to eat tonight. <laughs> it's so good. It's a uh, garlic habanero naga jolakia. Okay. Send me, a, send me a picture of it. It's actually really good. Uh, it's so funny, though. The... 
the branding, the label is the most generic, like, (laughs) fake shit ever. My sister got, like, four different other hot sauces, and they all say on the side, heat level, hot, in quotes, like, quote, (laughs) hot, and there's no heat level. Every single hot sauce at the store has heat level, hot, with no... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no descriptive factor of the no, no idea like a range no scoville unit something no. or whether whatever they literally printed out the same label on every sauce but the the title that's fucking funny it's very good though the um i actually i was when you first said something out of the like a half a, jar, a quarter jar of hot sauce i thought you were talking about the one that I made this year for Christmas, and I realized I still haven't given you your Christmas gift, oh, which would inc- is it include some hot sauce. Yeah, we, I killed that the first one. It was so good. This one, I I I don't know if it's better, but it's good as fuck. I'm it's definitely I hotter. I like heat. Yeah, it's definitely so like the other one. I I had an issue with. Like it was hot, but like once you mix it with anything, like it was diluted almost instantly. If, if you um, done, if you done the one chip deal, no, I have not. I don't know about all that. I I did do um, the source, which let me get the number right. That's the like the, ec- extract. Yeah, shit. yeah. There's another one. It's like the devil's piss or some shit. So, yeah. uh, the source is 7.1 million Scoville. Is that per drop of extract? Um, Because that's one of the ones that, like, you, I, you're in the I hospital, don't, right? Like, that's, like, you could poison yourself legitimately yes. very bad. <laughs> so, it's, like, per serving, and a serving is just, like, a droplet. For, um, is it really one drop? Yeah. Jesus. It's The, the bottle itself is $150. That my, is steep. My my chef had one at uh, one of the restaurants I worked at, and all what I did was I didn't take the full droplet. He was like, "You want to try it?" And I pulled out the dropper, and he was like, "He took a toothpick and stuck it to the <laughs> side of the dropper, and then gave me the toothpick." He's like, "That's plenty. That's wild." And that was the most sick I ever got from something being spicy. That's it's that impressive. Fucked me up. Yeah, these new pepper breeders are creating new hybrid peppers that are like ghost peppers are the, are the bottom level to these people now where they're, they're completely new species of peppers that are hybrids that are genetically modified and some of them are four five six seven million scovo mm-hmm. i had done the ghost peppers like 10 years ago uh, before I knew what they were, and I got so fucking sick. I, I mean, it, I'm glad I did it, but I wouldn't choose to. I don't know, unless there, it was the right situation, I wouldn't want to go through it again. A chick, it's, it, it's. I like pain rituals, mm-hmm. but that's there's just such a low reward for that one where it feels like you're really just getting sick i really like the branding Mm -hmm. or marketing of the the chip thing like if i was a kid that's awesome i love the idea exactly you're selling a little poisonous pain ritual to kids (laughs) that's so cool like we would have done that all the time oh yeah for sure yeah, that that's that one I'm down with. I mean, even these the idea of like the pepper eating shit, like that drives me nuts. It's like don't like why? Why why? There's no re like okay, there's definitely a thing of like being able to handle more spice, like you get a little bit of a tolerance to it, but there's a certain point like where like when you start talking about like reapers and shit like that, like there's no there's no tolerance for that. Like it's gonna fuck you up. If nothing else, like even if your mouth is like whatever, this is like tolerable and I can deal with it, it's gonna make you sick. Yeah. Like you can't just have that sitting in your fucking stomach. It's not good for you. And I think like, if I, I when had you make already, stuff out of it, it's fine. But I, I do think it's important to have those experiences once. Like if I hadn't ever done it, I feel like Yeah, yeah. Okay. I would have to still. 
I'm I'm down with that. I still haven't I haven't like eaten a whole reaper pepper before because I I, I don't I know how that ends. I honestly can't remember now if I did the ghost pepper or the reaper. I I, the reaper's hotter, right? The reaper is is currently it's the the it's the hottest one in the world. There are people that are making the different off brands or like the the, the you hybrid, know the sure. hybrids and right. stuff. But like they're not producing them to a degree that it's like a stable level. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 I forget the guy. There, there's one guy that's super. He's the famous guy for doing it, where he has his own pepper farm in the West, and it's all these crazy hybrids. But they, you have to get like each pepper individually tested to get proof of its Scoville, because they're so modified that you don't have inherent proof that it is that hotness unless you get it tested mm-hmm. but that they are getting new ones to market supposedly but still, uh, um yeah the uh carolina carolina reaper stuff is still the 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 accepted front runner of just a consistently you know one and a half million scoville yeah which is just fucking stupid all right i'm it's gonna so fucking stupid i'm gonna pick three rituals Okay, these are three things I've always wanted to try, and I hope at some point in my life I do at least one of them. Cool rituals. You have to pick one. Mm-hmm. The African neck rings. The okay. gold neck rings. Have to do that for a year and wear as many of them as possible. How yeah. long do they? does it take to, like, before you can, like, start adding them to, like... A pro- realistically... I- uh, probably a decade. I think they typically add like one ring a year in the earlier years, but I'm not positive. Let, we'll say for the sake of comparison, all these rituals are equal. So like regardless of how many rings or how long of time, think of the comparable version of that ritual to the next one. Okay. okay. What, what are, how many times or to what extent, whatever it has to be to be equal. Okay. Neck rings. Or the one where you bungee jump with the vines off the platform. I think that's a South American thing. So yeah. That one is one I've always wanted to do because I, I don't like heights, but I've always been able to force myself to tolerate it. But I feel like that would be a real battle your your fear type thing. Mm-hmm. Especially when it can go wrong. But they, they have such a great system. They really yeah. make it. I'm I'm down to do bungee jumping. We got one more. Okay. Or the alligator scarification shit. I knew you were gonna say that one. Yeah. So here's the thing. I'm 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 down to do bungee jumping. I the one with the vines worries me mostly because I'm a big boy. And Fair. Fair That's uh that's scary. Like we were even, I think it was in India where they were like, they had zip lines and it's like, um, the, these zip lines are made for the people that live here and they are not, they don't weigh what I weigh. I'll tell you what, I'm not trusting an Indian zip line. <laughs> <laughs> not, not for my American raised ass or my Midwest fucking corn fed ass. I don't trust an, an American zip line. Yeah. That's, that's actually pretty fair. Um, Zip like lining's fun. Rides? I've only gone zip lining a couple times. It, it, it was cool, but it was like once you get comfortable with it, because I'm I'm also I'm not big on heights. But like once you get comfortable with the fact that like your harness stand and like your str- there's like redundancies and shit, like yeah, you're fine. There's no. It's it's the same way with fair rides. If you go to a fair ride in the Midwest, mm-hmm. you have to accept your life as on the line. Yeah, it's, that's true. It's a low <laughs> chance, but you have to accept. You may yeah. be maimed or die. Yeah, you you just will. Have to. There's a, a non-zero possibility that you're going to be on the news tomorrow. Absolutely, and you're going to be labeled some dumb, stupid idiot. You're, you will who, become a statistic. <laughs> who, who was too poor to go to an amusement park, so they had to go to the county fair, and they died on the teacup ride. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the teacup. <laughs> and there was clearly drugs and or alcohol in your system, and you died being well, a total piece of shit. Of course, I'm at the state yeah. fair. Of course, I'm inebriated. What else is there to do there? Yeah, I got them from the guy operating the ride. 
one of my absolute favorite, I, I'm sure I've talked about it on here before, but one of my absolute favorite life experiences ever was early days of opiates. I think it might have been just some shitty Vicodin, but I had a bunch of somas, which is a, a sedative. Yeah. And they uh, potentiate Vicodin. And uh, I took way too much soma, where I, I was struggling to walk. Like Wolf on Wall Street or whatever the fuck type shit where you're you're like really struggling to control your muscles. Mm-hmm. And I went to the fair in uh, the West uh, – I forget what it's called now. The Westwood one. West Side uh, Pride. West, or, West Fest? Yeah, West Fest. Jesus. <laughs> and uh, I was drinking and I went on that ride where it spins you so fast you get stuck to the wall. Mm-hmm. And that was truly one of the most blissful experiences on my life. <laughs> Your agency was fully removed from me. Fully, I was not on this planet. Just <laughs> absolute bliss. That, like that. That's what I want out of life. Mm-hmm. All I want is to go back to West Fest <laughs> on sedatives and ride, and then eat deep fried Oreos after. That's that, my life. That goal. does sound legitimately very fun. <laughs> Fun. All right, pick pick your ritual. <sighs> Honestly, I never. I I mean, I think the idea of the the alligator scarification yes. would suck a a decent amount up front, but long term, yeah, the payoff would be way cooler. But there's more long term risk. Than the other one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because you have to pack it full of dirt, and then they smoke it out. You, know, they smoke out your wounds for like a week, where you sit in front of a, a fire, and the the thought process is is the smoke is killing off infection. Yeah, that's. Not I don't how think that it works. works that that's way. not. Yeah. No, that does not work that way. <laughs> and the, normally they're using like relatively dull razors or rocks, and then you pack all the cuts with mud. So mm-hmm. you're purposely creating hundreds of wounds that you're packing full of bacteria. Yeah. And I, I have tried it, and I, it didn't work as well. <laughs> no, not really? <laughs> didn't it really got, do? It got infected. Who <laughs> <laughs> oh, did it now? <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> um, but, but I didn't get the, the raised scars as much as I want. The ash and dirt will leave a tattoo-ish appearance, but I, I couldn't get the raised keloids. Yeah. But I wasn't doing it right. I need to go to someone who knows how to do it perfect. That's the thing. Like, if, if you're going to do one of those, I don't know. Oh, I'll add one more. Eating the monkey brains. <laughs> I mean... You want to as- hunt a monkey using birds and then eat its brain? That part sounds less fun. The idea of I like I like the Andrew Zimmern uh, approach of like if people are eating it, I'm I kind of want to try it. Yeah, like, you I'm know, it's not you. it's probably not going to be a thing that I want to love, but and it's only know, a small chance and, of getting mad horse disease or something. Yeah, and I've I've eaten brain before. Really? What um, up? it was um. Something in culinary school. Um, Is it a like, s- like, small I mean, bird? No. Uh, <laughs> um, like, I mean, they do like sweetbreads and stuff, which is like, yeah. I think sweetbreads, is, it might even include parts of the brain. Is it, what do you, there's there a whole monkey in the dough? Or <laughs> the batter? Um, Doesn't it have blood? Isn't sweetbread? Oh, that, that's the thymus or pancreas. I'm wrong about that. But the the brain, God, what did it come with? Something, what is sweet bread? Sweet bread is like the pancreas. Oh, I always thought it was just blood, like a blood uh, no, bread, no. or that's um, no. Yeah, there's the blood the, puddings. That, that's a thing. Um, Ugh, pancreas bread. Ugh. Was it head cheese? Is that what I'm thinking of? Head cheese is the maggot cheese, right? No. Jesus. A head cheese is a cold cut terrine or meat jelly that originated in Europe. Oh, made with God. flesh from the head of a calf or pig, typically set in aspic, usually eaten cold. It just looks so British. Ugh. 
Yeah, no, it definitely, um, I mean, it's Scottish. Ugh, what a disgusting um, country. Let me see, I think there's actually... <laughs> oh, their food is so great. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Unseasoned gray and cold. It just looks so fucking gross. I guess it beats monkey brains. It maybe. might have. It might have been rabbit. I think in that. I'm think that's the only place where I wouldn't have gotten it because it would have been in culinary school. Now something like that can. Is there a way to cook? I would assume your professor uh, or chef. Uh, what do you call a chef? Person? It'd be chef. It's still chef. Is it teacher chef? <laughs> it's just chef. Professor chef. Professor, Professor, Doctor, Chef. Is there a way to cook, let's say, bunny brains, where they can guarantee that there's no disease going to be given to the eater? Because I know the chances are always so low, but I think it's the like bacterial encephalitis. Like, there's different viral or bacterial brain diseases where even if the chances are super low basically eating anything's brain you have a chance of getting sick um like is there a way to cook the rabbit brains correctly? I, I i don't know that one i don't know i've never actually cooked brain before um i feel like you'd have to like uh, water boil shit like i feel like you'd have to oh, cook you know it what? in ways that don't taste good it was lamb brain oh that is adorable <laughs> yeah that's um <laughs> And I, I even think there, even they could, we were able to do it because it's a culinary school. Yeah. And it was one of those, like, we were trying all kinds of shit. Like, we had, like, kangaroo meat and shit. That's wild. Yeah. I kangaroo jerky. I, I didn't feel good about it at the time, but. Um, I've had ostrich before. We actually I used to work at a place that served ostrich, um, which I actually really liked. It's a lot like steak. I saw an ostrich Sunday. Did you? Did it look tasty? No, dude. I, it was. You want to make car seats out of its skin? This thing took a pee, and I never expected an ostrich's body to open the way it did. It was shocking. <laughs> Very interesting. It was almost like the. Um, like Alien versus Predator, where the alien queen gives birth, and it's like a long tube opens, <laughs> but instead of the egg like popping out, it was like a, almost like a tube thing opens, and Super Soaker compressed urine just blooms out. It was wild. It had an extendo cloaca. Yeah. Is that what they call it? That's the, I mean, that's what birds have. They just have the, mm. I'm, I'm not sure if it's all birds, but I'm pretty sure it's all birds have like a one hole for everything. Yeah. It was wild. I still cannot get over the chameleon penises though. That is <laughs> next level shit. Have you ever seen <laughs> the body mod? stuff for genitals like guys who actually split their dick yeah i've seen that it like a like a microwaved hot dog some there's <laughs> been a couple that are like actually impressive where somehow they're mm. fortunately endowed where like the split after multiple surgeries almost looks like two full dicks yeah, congratulations. It, the people are wild. I yeah, feel like that, that takes a lot of dedication to have it sure mul- does, man. To, to split your dick in half with multiple surgeries. And then the one dude that was like super popular fan, or like known for it had tattooed it too. Like the whole his whole double dick was tattooed and pierced. It's like that's so much work, dude. I don't yeah, want to spend dude. that much time on my my genitals. Yeah, no, dude. That's uh, I. I find it impressive, though. I mean, I guess so. That's that's a word. <laughs> it's interesting, impressive is least. a word. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, for sure. It's definitely that. Impressive is. It would make me curious. Arguable. If I happen to be giving said man a blowjob, I'd be quite 
curious. I'd be like, what's going on? Well, what's with what's this all film? this then? <laughs> <laughs> There's a story here. <laughs> What's the story with this? <laughs> How peculiar. <laughs> oh, god damn. I like weird shit. I don't know. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I like shit that makes me curious. Life's so fucking dull and drab. We have to find interesting genitals to make us <laughs> curious. Now you give you give the guy with the two dicks a blowjob. That's twice as much work. Could be. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how that anatomy shapes up because it. I don't know where the tubes diverge. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need a map to figure this out. <laughs> I'm, not I'm gonna need a diagram. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I need some schematics on this thing. <laughs> Does it? You got instructions? <laughs> Does this come with instructions? <laughs> I'm confused. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, here's your problem right here. Hopefully you got a warranty on this thing. <laughs> Man, it's a weird world, isn't it? I'm going to send it back in and get a new one. <laughs> I, I stand God by damn. that fish are aliens. I mean... Little asteroid aliens. They just... I, I mean, it's yeah, so I, I think that's a definitely, um, that yeah. makes more sense than, you know, the life arose from Jack shit. It Remember, makes way more sense that something. Didn't we read that article? Was it octopuses or squids? They thought were actually uh, from. Octopuses, yeah. They're actually from asteroids. It might be cephalopods in general, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, like, I think that that's. That makes sense to me. The idea that the fucking, I don't know, like the, the material for life, it didn't just come to be that there was a, you know, it was in a, or some kind of DNA or, you know, single celled organism, a um, extremophile that was frozen in the water on an asteroid that hit Earth and, you know, while it was still in its, you know, super lethal methane gas, not methane. Um, was it methane? The, the, the pools. Like, I feel like methane. Or, or, there was the other one though too. Methane's involved in there. That's the soup of it all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw these penguins. It was so cool. They were tiny little dumb penguins. Like warm water ones, or warmer. I guess they were more hab habituated to warmer weather because they're outside and it was relatively warm. But these these little, maybe six inches tall, some of them, less than most of them, less than a foot. And when they would stand above the water, their their coat, I guess, their feathers, their sheen was almost midnight blue too black and then they would dive in the water and it was set up so you know that had the glass in front of you where you could you were next to about four feet of water so you could see them above on the land with their dark shiny coat and when they'd pop in they'd swim by you you know mm -hmm. and their feathers looked like scales under the water how the the sun would gleam on them it was almost a rainbow scale matrix pattern more than feathers. Like if you were looking at a zoomed in photo of it, you would guess a snake before you would penguin. And my assumption is that their feathers are much shorter than I thought and like perfectly designed to, to be in the water, to, to gather that, that pattern. It was really pretty. Yeah, I mean that plus the um like the waterproofing mm -hmm. that like would make the water like instead of soaking into it create a barrier where it like can reflect yeah differently too. I just had never I never would have guessed prior that 
a bird's feathers would look so scale-like underwater. I mean, really, up close, I don't think most people would guess a bird. I think they would guess a snake on just how convincing it looked. That is one of the animals that if I play my cards right and I'm nice to the zookeepers, I've been told that it's possible that I'll get a uh, behind-the-scenes experience with the, the penguins. You know why they offer the penguins? Why? Because no one wants the fucking penguins. Oh, man. That's a low bid. Cool. When you get the penguin offer, you fold your hand, and then next round you up the bid. You're going to for tigers or you're going broke? Yeah, they, they, I've, I've already been, so I, I asked about the tiger. I made a joke about like, oh, just let me boop it on its nose. And they, it's a good they seed looked plant. exasperated and were like, like, you know, they hear <laughs> that hilarious. enough times in a day and they're like, no, you're not going to, like, they didn't even like engage with me seed. about it. So what's your middle bid? If you, if penguins is too easy to get, tiger's too hard, where do you set some, <sighs> lay some track in the middle ground so you can work your way up? I don't know, the um, anteater or something, maybe? I did get a walk with the kangaroos, which is always fun. Yeah, so that is that is a thing they have here is like, um, it's an open yeah. kind of area where you go in and... Dude, I don't trust these fuckers. They could run riot on everyone in there. That's in, what uh, I kept thinking was like, really, second. y'all were doing this? The, this dude, this one dude had to be on its haunches four and a half, five feet tall. And it moved using its tail as a muscle. And if it stood on its tail, it would be bigger than me and have way more punching power. Mm-hmm. And there were like 40 of them. They could yeah. fuck. They could take us all hostage. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Dude, the other day. <laughs> it's so funny you said that. The other day I left. Um, <laughs> I had to like go into the zoo, drop off some shit and then leave. And then I came back when I left the first time, like there is a ambulance and a fire truck pulling in. Oh shit. And I yeah. was like, Oh shit. Like, I wonder what's going on. Let's get it. Like, probably somebody overheated or something like whatever. Hurry. And then I, I went, I got my car and like drove away, came back. And when I came back, there were a bunch of people that were just standing around the entrance of the zoo no one's going in everyone's just standing around (laughs) and like talking and i was like what's going on over here and the first guy was just like he like smiled at me like obviously he didn't hear me just like nodded at me and like that unhelpful and then i went over to someone else and they were i was like is there something going on here and they're like like what do you mean and i was like all the everyone's just like waiting outside the front like, oh, yeah, these are parents waiting to pick up the the safari camp kids. It's mm. like, fuck, man. I thought someone, like, you know, the gorilla got loose or some shit and no one's allowed in. Or, like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Like, some some weird shit happened. The tiger ate, ate somebody dog, and they're yeah. trying to clean up the scene. I was – that's where my mind went. Like, oh, shit, what's going on in were here? You, were you disappointed? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, Definitely. It was just a bunch of fucking kids coming from their day camp, which I mean, <sighs> I might have. What a letdown! Part, part of my disappointment might have been my jealousy that I wasn't in, in a cool safari fucking camp yeah of man going to work yeah man be <laughs> cool as fuck hanging out with my friends and fucking hanging out at the zoo. Come Eat, on, eating PB and J's in the yeah sun. man. Getting some pizza or some shit on on Friday because you did a full week of of camp. Come on. Speaking of PB and J's, I think I'm done podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> That's very fair. I think I'm gonna go eat some food. I have ate like three capfuls of this hot sauce at this point. And, uh, <laughs> I think that may be the sign. I should probably go make some real food. You know what? Since you started talking about that, I've my I've got a heartburn going on now. Damn. What, and I what think would we call it's it? it's probably just the falafel wrap that I scarfed earlier, but if, vi- vicarious heartburn, perhaps? You feel um, you feel for my belly. So yeah, much. yeah. <laughs> Just the mention of overeating hot sauce. Oh, talking about t- dicks gave me heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I fucking rubbed hot sauce in my eye too. Uh, oh, cool, nice. You'll uh, be feeling that. Thanks again for listening, everybody. <laughs> Thank you to Approaching Human for the use of his music. You can find his work on uh, SoundCloud at Approaching-Human. Yeah, thanks, John. Make sure to check out the show page at Trash Cats Trash Cast for news and art from the show. Oh, uh, on Instagram. <laughs> Jesus, I haven't fucked that up in a long time. We're on uh, threads now, too. We got, oh, are we? <laughs> yeah, we got 10 followers. Really <laughs> booming. The podcast has been... Uh, uh, a soaring success story lately. <laughs> Do you need to just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just uh, share some stolen memes and shit? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is that, am, am I, that's just text based, isn't it? Mm-mm. I thought it's, that was like Twitter for. It's literally just, I mean, Twitter has video. Oh, yeah, and I guess they do. I'm not on Twitter. I don't know. Twitter is a really bad place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Threads is literally the same thing, but classier and probably will be just as dumb in a month from now. Go but, fucking yeah. Zuck the Cuck's got something new up his sleeve. Hey, and- he, I'm defending my boy Zuck <laughs> because he would beat the fuck out of Elon <laughs> any day. Elon's such a piece of shit. And he's got little, them, he's got them robot arms and strength. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny if he showed up like borged out. Right? Fucking <laughs> just in a mech suit. Just <laughs> That would be awesome if they could use their tech and money to make the fight more even. <laughs> oh, man. I would love that. God. Uh, did you see uh, – well, you probably don't give a shit. Fuck. Uh, Naganu and Tyson Fury have a boxing match lined up. Nice. It's pretty crazy. The best boxer, heavyweight boxer of all time and the uh, most powerful mixed martial artist of all time doing a – a boxing match going to be weird. Cool stuff. If you like violence. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I want to leave a, a cut mark in there. Um, did you see the, I guess the Italian government, like, reached out to Elon and Zuckerberg and was like, you can f- have your fight at the Coliseum. No. Interesting. I, I know Dana White's the one selling the fight yeah they were they were talking about like that? yeah just just do it here like why not <laughs> did, oh, did you see what elon said today though or it was today or yesterday no he so zuck released photos of him training and it's like the first time you know from my understanding i don't really i don't i don't follow this shit i don't know but he had kind of a six-pack and was looking way more cut than we've seen him previously and he was with um Adesanya and Volkanovski two really good fighters and has been doing legit training for the last two years at least he's been training for a long time and uh Elon saw the photos and he proposed instead of fighting which he's the one who suggested it he proposed instead they do a literal dick measuring contest. Fucking rad. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> how, how dystopian of a world where are <laughs> the richest people in the world that have all of the people's money are doing dick measuring contests. A literal and, dick measuring contests. And threatening, threatening to cage fight each other at the Coliseum. And it's all being sold back to us. It's just so fucking strange. Yeah, that's we, the other one is they, people are going to have to pay for that. <laughs> yeah. It's just weird behavior. Weird stuff. I mean. You know, think of the, the alternate forward. world, alternate universe situation where instead of them organizing it, it's they are they are captured and put in the Coliseum dungeons for <laughs> like three days. And, and then they're thrown fight. to yes. fight each other. <laughs> We have to capture them and make them fight. It can't yeah. be their choice. It it does suck, though. All these professional fighters that spend their whole life becoming the best fighter they ever, that they could attempt to be, and instead we're going to watch billionaires who don't know how to fight just because we know who they are. Like, yeah. And real fighters don't make shit. It's, it's like so goofy. Like, I want to watch the, the real violence not the sloppy violence i mean i'm okay with watching a billionaire get hit in the mouth 
Not if you have to pay for it, though. I'll watch a crack Oh, version. no. Someone's going to bootleg that shit. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry, man. Someone's going to make that shit free. We'll, we'll stream it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's gonna be all for us today. Stay classy, eat trashy. Classy, trashy.